think about the last time you looked up at the moon. According to the Lunar and Planetary Institute, it takes 27 days, seven hours, and 43 minutes for the moon to complete one full orbit around the Earth. Every month, we have the privilege to watch the moon morph from a dark and mysterious new moon to a bright and brilliant full moon. The moon cycle has sparked humanity's curiosity about one of the most striking facets of existence, the concept of time. Time holds so much power over us, yet it's notoriously difficult to define. So we have long looked to nature for markers of its existence. The ancient Sumerians were the first to develop a lunar calendar, and many others soon followed. However, the ancient Sumerians probably weren't the first to use a part of nature so powerfully cyclical to keep track of time. For people who menstruate, menstruation has been a nearly inescapable marker of time throughout history. According to the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the moon cycle is approximately as long as the average person's menstrual cycle. So the two have become intertwined throughout history. However, while the moon is often honored and its cycle celebrated, menstruation is often shamed and menstruating people are even shunned. In South Asia, my ancestors region, Many communities celebrate phases of the moon with festivals. In contrast, many of these same communities drive menstruating people to the outskirts. One of these people is Purnima Javardhan, a 25-year-old woman living in Sitatola, a village in central India. She is pushed by her community to stay in a hut called a Galpur every time she menstruates. She has spoken out about the conditions of these huts, explaining that during the rainy season, it is all the more difficult to stay in a Gaokor because water comes inside and sometimes the roof leaks. In Purnima's community, like many others, menstruating people are forced to endure suboptimal, isolating, and even dangerous conditions. Take a moment to think about a time you felt ashamed, alone, or impure, like you were being punished or humiliated for something you had no control over. Millions of people, like Pornima, experience this sense of shame and isolation every month. Many young people can't even attend school because they either lack menstrual products or are punished for needing to change. They miss one week a month on average and end up falling so far behind that they drop out completely. Throughout South Asia, 94,572,706 girls did not attend secondary school in 2010. One major reason has been cited as the inaccessibility of sanitary pads. Many of these girls, though not all, live in rural villages. A lot of families cannot afford to meet basic hygiene needs, and many others are prevented from using these products by the shame that comes with asking for them. This shame is perpetuated by community silence surrounding periods. According to one study, 71% of girls in India report no knowledge of menstruation before their first period. It is important to note that girls and women are not the only people who menstruate, but a lot of the data that's been collected this far has surrounded them. Talking about menstruation is often avoided, so people feel stigmatized when seeking information about products that could allow them to participate in school. Therefore, they forfeit in education. Literally billions of people menstruate. Why do so many report such a stark sense of 
shame and loneliness? And why don't more schools accommodate this large group of people? These issues are connected in a way that isn't plainly obvious. As people from South Asian villages drop out of school due to their periods, they are prevented from pursuing careers in public health, sanitation, and related sectors. They are largely ignored when they speak up without a relevant degree or job. This has paradoxically become another, more sinister cycle. People who are prevented from attending school due to a lack of access to menstrual hygiene products face barriers to contributing to fields that influence access to menstrual hygiene products. This is just one example of a prevalent global pattern. People who suffer the most from health access issues are prevented from obtaining the tools to advocate for themselves. You might be wondering why I am so passionate about this issue. When I was in high school, I had the opportunity to participate in an intensive four-year research program. My research centered around the lack of access to menstrual products in South Asia. But why did I choose this topic? First of all, as a South Asian woman myself, I find stories I've heard from people living in South Asia about the barriers they face to sanitary products and education, striking and horrifying. My own mother and grandmother have shared with me their experiences of stigma surrounding menstruation in India. The practices and beliefs I've learned about through these stories have driven me to want to change attitudes so South Asians do not have to face such harmful ideation. I want to amplify the voices of those who have spoken out and bring to light the needs of those who have been shamed into silence. But there is a larger reason why I find this issue so important. I'm interested in healthcare, so I've seen both the positive impacts accessible care has and the barriers that many face to health-related resources, including menstrual products. But of course, these barriers are not limited to, menstruation, to menstrual health in South Asia. In fact, they plague most community health and medical systems. Trauma, pain, and hopelessness ensue when systems that are supposed to save lives rob people of theirs. Those who have experience in an area and therefore unique insights into how a community should address it are silenced by a lack of access to care, resources, and therefore opportunities. Without those who can speak their truth, Stigma and false information are ingrained in society and creep their way into medical schools, scientific journals, and governmental structures. The harm of this is often seen when people who hold marginalized identities need care. According to the Association of American Medical Colleges, medical school students were taught for years that black people who have long faced systemic barriers to entering the medical field, have thicker skin and feel less pain than non-black people. These ideas are obviously not founded on scientific principle, yet they prevailed for a long time. They still have dangerous consequences that drive some medical professionals to refuse black patients treatment options. The voices of those affected by biases in healthcare are silenced, and this silence is dangerous. It prevents people from changing the stigma that perpetuates this very cycle. So what can we do to break the cycle and liberate ourselves from the stigma? First of all, we must ensure that communities are safe spaces for people to share their experiences allowing people not only the space to speak up if they choose to, but also to be heard, has lasting positive effects. For example, some girls forced to stay in Galpors have spoken to newspapers about the shame and fear they experience. 
their vulnerability and courage have contributed to a growing awareness of the issue, which has become self-amplifying, with many activist groups globally now demanding an end to this harmful tradition. Some of these groups have even worked with schools to establish days focused on educating students about menstrual health. These powerful actions not only diminish shame menstruating people feel, but also increase awareness among people who do not menstruate. As community members, we can transform our communities by inviting others to share their experiences, truly listening, and asking ourselves what changes we can make. Systemic biases within healthcare, policy, and education must also be addressed. The burden of changing how health needs are met cannot fall on one individual alone. After all, biases are deeply ingrained into communities. No one deserves blame for something out of their control, yet an attitude of blaming individuals for their circumstances is woven into the very framework that underlies our healthcare system. It shapes how clinical and community interventions are carried out and therefore has global implications for access to care and resources. In order to pursue a career in research, public health, or clinical medicine, people need an education. Many groups of people most affected by health access issues face barriers in the classroom and are consequently prevented from contributing to these fields. For example, I mentioned earlier that many people in South Asia are prevented from attending school by an educational system that does not accommodate their periods. Education is one of society's most powerful tools. It provides pathways to possible careers, ample ways to explore oneself, and opportunities to be heard. If more people who experience health access issues, for example, more menstruating people in rural South Asia, could comfortably access an, edu an education, more might earn degrees in fields such as community health they will be able to factor their own experiences into the work and spark systemic change. Structural changes to healthcare and education will therefore help break the cycle of silence that inequity in healthcare perpetuates. This cycle has led to countless people lacking basic sanitary products, medications, an education, diagnosis, and the support they need. To change its course, we must commit to uplifting the voices of those who've shared their experiences. So in this QR code, I've linked some further resources. Those who have the power to do so must also make systemic changes to health policy, clinical care, research design, and educational systems informed by those who've shared their stories of inequity. It is imperative that we abolish the cycle of shaming people into silence and replace it with a cycle that is beautiful and unwavering, like the moons, in which every individual has the resources they need to pursue opportunities that forge a path for them to share their unique and important ideas, contributions, and story. Thank you.